Hello, this is Salamander Anagram with ADSRCourses.com and welcome to part 6 of our tutorial series on the new Blocks framework in Reactor 6. In this video I'll be improving upon the oscillator module that we made previously by giving it some more waveforms to play around with. For more Reactor content, please check out our website at ADSRCourses.com. So let's hop inside the process macro of our module. And I'm going to get rid of the existing oscillator mod macros here. And we'll replace them with an oscillator from the library called the 4Wave. And as you can see, the 4Wave outputs four different oscillator types at once. And we can feed it the same frequency and reset inputs as we did the sawtooth macro previously. I'm going to ignore the um, pulse width input for now. The pulse width only affects the output of the pulse oscillator and we don't really have a lot of room on our panel right now to uh, add more controls for that so I'm just going to leave it out for the time being. So the next thing we want is a way to select one of these four oscillators to be sent to our outputs. Unfortunately, there's a handy macro for that in the process macros core cell called clock select. So the clock select takes four signal inputs, which is helpful since we have four oscillators. And then it has a clock input, and for the clock we'll use just our sample rate clock. So you can right click and choose that from the menu. And um, then we just need a parameter that controls which input is being read out, the select input. And we'll supply that um, with a user control. And next we can connect the output of our clock selectors to the add module. So we'll want a new input for our select parameter. So I'll create one and name it P1. And we can create a quick bus for that as well by right clicking. And we'll name the quick bus select. And of course, our new quick bus can control the select input of the clock select macro. So that's all the programming that we need to do for our processing macro. So we can get out of here and create a user control for the select parameter. To begin with, I'm just going to create an output from our panel macro and connect that to the input that we created previously in the process macro. And then let's go find ourselves a uh, appropriate control from our dark on light instrument. So we'll use uh, the radio button macros for this. The radio button is a set of buttons and only one of them can be on at any given point in time. So we've got two macros for that. One of them accepts a color input, one of them does not. We'll just keep it simple with the default color version. And paste it into our panel macro. Connect to our output. And let's hop to the panel and take a look at that. So we've got six buttons here. We only need four because we've only got four oscillator types. So we can go to our radio button macro and delete the last two buttons. And next we want to change the labels. Right now they're labeled 0 through 3. And I'm just going to change them to match the names of our oscillator types. Each radio button has two labels, one for when it's on and one for when it's off. And I'm going to name them each the same thing regardless of whether they're on or off. So we'll name these labels saw, 
pulse, triangle, and sine in order. And if we check on the panel view, the triangle isn't going to fit in there. So I'm just going to rename it to try TRI. And we're done programming at this point in time. The only thing left to do is to move the radio buttons to a better location on the panel view. In order to do that, I'm simply going to turn on the frame of the radio button macro. If you don't do that, moving all the elements is really tough. Um, it's a lot easier just to move the whole macro at once. Unfortunately, the elements move when you turn the frame off, which is not my favorite behavior, but you can kind of estimate where it's going to hop to. All right, so finally, let's make sure that everything's working. I'm just going to use a very basic block setup like we did last time so we can hear our oscillator easily and clearly. All right, so everything appears to be in working order. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram. For more of my reactor work, please check out reactortutorials.com. And thank you for watching.